<sighs> Hello everyone, Unrested back here again on what has become an extremely frigid uh, fall season. Quite quickly you'll find if you don't like the weather in Osaka, wait about 24 hours and it will change quite quickly. Um, really quite, one of the things I was always quite surprised about with Japan in the last four years that I've been here is how quickly it suddenly changes from summer to winter, or I, I guess fall, but it feels like winter already uh, here in Osaka. Now, as for the other parts of Japan, I'm not really too sure. Really, I've only lived in Osaka, so if you come to Osaka, always be ready for drastic, dramatic changes in the weather from season to season. One thing that I've decided to talk about today in today's JFAC is about assimilating assimilating into Japanese society and having harmony with Japanese society. Now, many of you, when you come here your first year, that's really not something you're going to tackle in the first year that you're here. If you're just coming as a tourist or you're just coming for a quick one-year stay, maybe a one-year visa for a student or a college stay, perhaps that's not going to be in the cards for you. Um, but for those of you who plan a long-term life here, uh, you will find that becoming an issue as you slowly begin to meld into the society that is Japan. So today I thought I'd touch on three different topics with harmonizing with Japanese society. Let's start out with a simple one, and a very simple one is mealtime. Mealtime in Japan is not really too different from mealtime in any other country. Um, you might read about a lot of different rules and manners and some books in America. I know I read quite a few in uh, books like Survival Japanese, Japanese for Dummies, stuff like that. Um, a lot of the stuff they're going to tell you is not really uh, manners that are uh, uh, foremost taboo or really vital to you fitting into the culture here. And actually, for the most part, I'm going to say, uh, you know, small little errors you might make in manners at the dinner table are either going to be overlooked or forgiven in Japan. Um, small things like mixing the wasabi with the soy sauce to eat sushi. Um, I read before that that was a huge taboo. Well, I can tell you I've watched many a Japanese people do that and it's once again a very small issue, not anything that is going to get you into a lot of trouble at the dinner table, but there are some small things you need to observe. For example, one of the biggest faux pas you can make is moving a dish with your chopsticks uh, or moving a bowl. Uh, why is this so taboo? Why is this something that is strange? You would just think, well, how is it any different from moving something with my hand? Well, when you go to a Japanese funeral, one of the things you might not know is at the very end of the funeral, the body is cremated and you are actually given the bones of the person who has been cremated. I mean, this is uh, actually bringing out the bones on a tray, or perhaps the tray that fit into the incinerator, and you and the family, or close relatives, then begin to actually pick the bones up with chopsticks and save them in an urn. Um, probably one of the most surprising things I ever did here in Japan was partake in a funeral, which I had no idea I would be actually seeing the skeleton afterward and collecting the bones. Now when you do this, you do this with chopsticks and you can move the bowl or urn or whatever you're actually placing them in. Many times it changes as to what object you actually place the bones inside of. You'll move those most times um, from one family member to the next, the bowl or the urn or the collection pot. And this will be moved with the chopsticks. Now moving food at the dinner table with chopsticks shows symbolism to a funeral and obviously that's taboo when you're eating not something you want to mix death and food um, some other small things if you're eating in the presence of elders it's really good if you can finish everything on your plate and by everything on your plate I mean down to the last piece of rice some elders here in Japan and there are quite a few elders as you know we have quite a big gray nation here um, Quite a few elders have survived from World War II. And after World War II here in Japan, food was scarce. It was little to none and very hard to get. Imports were uh, almost never seen and 
pretty much anything and everything had to be eaten. Um, this left people clinging to every last bite on their plates. And still to this day, elders in Japan will see it as very rude if you don't honor the complete meal. And that means eating every last bite. Don't take more than what you're going to eat in front of an elder. It's really considered rude if you're going to leave a plate full of food. Really considered wasteful and really considered not honoring the dish you were served. Now, for the most part, I will say Japanese meals are very small in proportion to uh, the average Western meal. They're going to be a lot smaller. But there are some meals where you are pretty much left to your own devices as far as how much you're going to take. That's dishes like shabu shabu, um, which is uh, meats and vegetables and boiling water, um, yakiniku, which is grilling different types of meats and then eating it. Pretty much you're left up to yourself. It's a tabe hodai, which means all you can eat situation. And you will be pretty much picking and taking what you want to eat. If you decide to take more than you can eat, it's better that you stuff yourself rather than be wasteful in front of an elder. Just try to remember that, you know, my generation and the generation younger than me, not such a big issue if you're going to do that at, say, a restaurant or something like that. But really, if you're ever invited over to somebody's house and, you know, they're an elder, please try to finish all your Our food next one is a very important issue if you decide to work here in Japan or get a working visa, and that is harmony in the workplace. And this is something where I've many a time seen things go afoul, okay? One of your best things you can do is sit back quietly and observe how your workplace works, okay? I'm not going to say there is a uniform way that all Japanese workplaces uh, work, but I will say that all have sort of their own code, uh, their own harmony. And for the most part, the most important thing is keeping harmony in the workplace. I cannot reiterate how important this is and how many times I've seen this run afoul with gaijin who feel it's their place to be overstated with their opinion. Now, I'm not saying we're all like that. I'm not saying we're all super aggressive and proud in our Western ways and independence. But I will say there has been times where I have seen people overstep their bounds. Let's put it that way. What I'm trying to get to is pretty much every place will have a way in which it runs. For example, if you're going to work at a shogaku or chugaku, a junior high school or elementary school, uh, for the most part, you will not really be considered one of the teachers. You will be an assistant language teacher, okay, ALT. And in this situation, don't expect to come in there and get treated like the best sensei or you know, the main English sensei, because you really are not. You are an assistant to the main English senseis, okay? So if you try to have the same leverage as them with students, don't be surprised if it's not taken in the most serious way. Other things you might want to know is it's really not the best place to try and make your opinion very strong. For example, when you come in, there will already be certain rules and even textbooks in place. And whether or not you agree with what's been put in place, please realize it was put in place far before you came to the school by the Board of Education, okay? Also, most Akaiwas that you would work for had textbooks long before you came, possibly, possibly even made their own textbook, or have been using a certain set of textbooks for a long time. Now, like I said, you may not agree with what these are. For example, most schools here in Osaka use an Oxford textbook called The Crown. And my personal opinion, it's really not the best book for teaching kids. Also, my personal opinion is that more people learn English via immersion teaching, but that's not done in Japan. English is pretty much taught via Japanese, which I really, you, you can't totally understand what I mean until you watch English taught in Japanese. Um, you know, is it the best way? Maybe it's not. Is it my place to try and change the entire Japanese system? No, and guess what? It's not your place either. Um, you can have your own opinions, but my best advice is keep them to yourself, okay? Realize that 
for the most part, most Japanese companies and schools are set in their ways, and you are not going to be the first gaijin to waltz in there and change that. Um, I have seen some gaijin come in and try to do that. I once saw um, quite an older teacher. Um, he had been there in uh, teaching for quite some time, uh, and not in Amer not I'm sorry, not in Japan, but in America. And he was an English teacher in America and came over at about, I think he was 50 years old when he came over to Japan and decided he knew what was best. And perhaps he really did. I mean, he might have really had quite a good background um, as he had been in the school system for quite some time in America. But the school system in America and Japan are very different. And he came in there very bullheaded and tried to change things. Uh, he would not teach from the book, he would not follow the directions of the head English teacher, and he would even do stuff like, um, we have a osoji time, the honorary cleaning time every day at junior high schools and elementary schools, and he felt as a teacher that was not his job, that was the job of a janitor, which in some cases it might be, but um, that's not something that you don't partake in. You definitely have to be part of that in schools. He decided that wasn't his job, and very quickly the next year he was let go from our company to no surprise. So, as I said, even if you feel the system in place for whatever company you work for is not the best, it's not your place to step up and say, let's Finally change. and foremost is arguing. Now, for the most part, I want to say it's best to keep your mood, your attitude, and your personality even-tempered in Japan. To keep a calm, cool personality is very respected in Japan. Now, there are certain times where it's great to have an outburst of uh, humor or maybe celebration or a very happy mood, but one mood I will say that's usually never good to do is an outburst of anger in Japan. Definitely that can make almost any situation quite uncomfortable. Now, in most countries that's true, but even what you might consider only a small outburst of anger in perhaps America would be considered quite a strong outburst here in Japan. For example, to aggressively argue in the middle of a company meeting would definitely be taken as very harsh here in Japan. You need to watch your step when you decide to speak up, okay? And that might be getting into arguing. Um, now, I'm not saying a lot of arguments happen. It's not a situation you're going to get into a lot in Japan. But it's going to happen with things like maybe a company meeting or a relationship. If you do decide to enter into an argument, my main advice would be do not become overly aggressive with your argument here in Japan. To ferociously beat someone over the head with your opinion will not change someone's mind here. It will instead make you come across as bullheaded and barbaric. Um, for the most part, what you would want to do if you do decide to enter into an argument is to agree and even see into the other person's view, accept it, but then very slowly and as gradually and as in harmony as possible, twist it slowly to become your view. I know this doesn't sound like the most direct way, and perhaps it's vague, and perhaps it's even dancing around an issue very slowly, but gradually you want to shape their view into your view. How do you do that? Well, very tactfully and with the most harmony possible. Uh, the choice of words is yours. Perhaps it'll be done in Japanese, in which case you better be pretty damn good at Japanese. Anyway, that's enough for Harmony today. We will get back into this issue with another JFAC later down the line. As for now, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to send them to me. I'm Unrested. This is JFAC. See you next time.